one. All right, coming at you with some ergonomics tips for setting up your home computer workstation. The opinions I am going to share are based on my own and they're based on my years of experience, 20 years working in the ergonomics field. I am a board certified professional ergonomist. What we're gonna talk about is all about your posture and different tools that you can use at home to set up your computer because we know a lot of you are going to be working at home in the coming weeks and as you increase the duration of time that you spend doing that you could potentially increase your risk for uh, some sort of strain so let's see what we can do to avoid that working most likely with what you already have at home so what we're going to do is talk about the order of adjustments and it's really important to work from the bottom up when you're trying to set up your workstation you can see i'm sitting here at my dining room table most typically you'll wind up somewhere like that or maybe you'll be in your kitchen you're probably going to be at a desk that is not height adjustable so let's talk about how to work with that but first we're going to start with your feet your feet should be resting flat on the floor you really need to avoid this avoid crossing your legs that puts strain on your back so just be mindful of that when you are sitting here you might be in a situation where your feet are dangling. Maybe your dining room chair is not ideal. I'm just gonna show you something you can use if you're in that situation. Stack some books, or maybe you have a box that you can use, and get yourself in that space where you've got both feet resting flat on the floor. And the nice thing about working from home is you probably don't need to worry about wearing fancy heels or anything like that. So some good supportive footwear is always a good idea. Then you're gonna be looking at your lower legs you want these shins to be approximately vertical, like what you're seeing here. And then you're looking at your thighs, trying to keep them about parallel to the floor. Again, this can get really tricky depending on what kind of chair you're working with. So I'm gonna kind of move and talk about your hip angle, uh, the angle that your upper body makes with your thighs. In terms of that angle, you're looking at about 90 degrees. What you want to avoid, and I'll just kind of lift my legs to show you, you want to avoid any kind of posture where that becomes less than 90 degrees, because again, that's going to put more strain on your back. Now, if you wanted to create or have an angle greater than 90, and I'm just going to kind of lift up to show you what I'm talking about, a more open angle, that's actually okay. And what you can do here, another prop to play around with maybe you have a pillow at home and this is where you might put this on your seat pan um, to try to see if you could create more of an angle if that's something that you desire or maybe you need some more height because your chair is too low this is another trick that you could use that can help you out in that respect the other nice thing that you can use a pillow for is to give yourself some support for your back so we're continuing to move up the body it's really important to avoid hunching and leaning forward. This is a very common posture. I see this in the office environment in general, and you are definitely susceptible to this occurring in the home environment as well. A pillow is a nice way to give you some support. You could also take a towel and roll it up, put it in what I call the small of your back. If you can kind of feel this low curve down here, uh, putting a rolled up towel back there can help create what we call lumbar support. So that's another idea. And now we're moving up, we're continuing, looking now at the work surface. Like I mentioned, a lot of dining room tables are kind of tricky in terms of height. You can see mine is a little bit high. Ideally, I'd have my forearms about parallel to the floor. I'm a little bit higher than that, so that is something I can either play around again with pillows, try to get myself up a little bit more so I can get some better posture with my forearms because I want that and I want to keep my wrists straight as well when I'm working. Chances are you're using a laptop or a Surface Pro or something where you're typing off of a keypad that's attached to a screen. Now the trick with laptops is it's very difficult to set yourself up right with this because you're always compromising one posture for another. If I'm working off a keyboard, I might be at the right height. My monitor will definitely be too low. I'm gonna be bending my neck down to look at it. Conversely, if I had this monitor at the right height, I'm probably gonna to be too high for my wrists and those forearms. So here's what I'm gonna recommend and I hope you have these available if not, I hope you can get to an office supply store. The first thing I'm gonna recommend is having an external keyboard and mouse. And I do 
keep myself a stash at home because this will allow me to get this height in the right space while I'm typing and mousing, which is the majority of the work you do. But the other thing, you need to get this monitor at the right height. And I like to use boxes and books. You can use reams of printer paper to get yourself in a position where your line of sight, if you can imagine a horizontal line extending from your eyes, it's gonna hit the top third of the screen. And in terms of the viewing distance, you wanna be about an arm's length away. So the difficulty when you're working right off a laptop, bending forward, also eye strain from that screen being too close. So now I've got myself back got myself at a good height where, again, I can keep my back more upright. Think about your shoulders. This is something I'm extremely guilty of, but you wanna keep them retracted. You want to avoid them being elevated as well. You can see I do not have armrests. That's okay. You can let your arms float freely at the sides if you don't have an armrest. It's not the end of the world. You do wanna avoid pressing elbows on an armrest if you do have them, but that's just something else to keep in mind. Now, in terms of breaks, they become really important when you're working from home. I would recommend about every 30 minutes or so, get up for a few minutes, get yourself a glass of water, take a restroom break, have a snack, walk and move around. The human body is not designed to sit all day, nor is it designed to stand all day. So it's really important to incorporate some movement throughout the day, as well as giving your eyes a break. I call it the 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, Take 20 seconds and look in the distance at an object 20 feet away. Then that's just another way to give your eyes a break, making sure that you blink as often as you can. Lighting in your home environment might be a little bit different than what you would have in your office environment. So taking those eye breaks are important. The other thing you could consider doing is, I know a lot of people like to stand, and you could go into the kitchen, maybe on your kitchen counter and stand and work off of that for a while and then come back to this more optimal setup and work off of this for a while. So those are a few tips I wanted to share because I know a lot of you are going to be working from home and if you can try to take advantage of pillows and books and props that you already have in your house and potentially if you don't already have an external keyboard and mouse, I would say these are a couple of the more essential tools and they're cheap and you might even be able to borrow them from some friends, but I would highly encourage you to just think about your setup a little bit as you're working from home so that you can set yourself up for success and stay healthy. So thanks, appreciate your time.